lot of us wonder, how do we get diabetes? And more importantly, how do we get rid of it? It's basically a disease of lifestyle and to some smaller extent also of genetics. But lifestyle is preponderantly the most common reason why we get diabetes. And most of that is related to what we eat. It's our diet that's high in high fructose corn syrup and sugar and other carbohydrates. And it's also a lack of exercise. There's now an epidemic of people who are not eating right and people who are not exercising right. We also know that stress and sleep and drugs have a lot to do with causing type 2 diabetes. There's an epidemic, as we all know, of what's called the metabolic syndrome, which is characterized by a number of things that we should all know about. One is that we have too much insulin in response to the fact that our insulin doesn't work as well uh, in that setting, particularly if we've stressed the pancreas. Uh, and also our triglycerides rise, and when their level is above 150, that usually tells us that there's something going on, as well as a low, high-density lipoprotein, that HDL, which is less than 40. Abdominal obesity, for a man, usually 40 inches or more, and a woman, 35 inches or more around the middle, is, is consistent with that. And people who have hypertension, usually 130 over 85 or more than that, are consistent with some of the criteria for uh, metabolic syndrome. Now, one of the things that's key for this is something called insulin resistance, which means our insulin simply doesn't work as well as it should. And in response to that, our body makes more and more insulin to try and regulate blood sugar levels, which are absolutely critical to keep in a range where they should be. This is one of the key pieces of the so-called metabolic syndrome that I just described, but it's also caused by a number of other uh, substances and other, other situations, things like low vitamin D levels and the polycystic ovary syndrome. Uh, people who are inflamed for any reason very often have uh, this problem with insulin resistance. Uh, people who are consuming a lot of high fructose corn syrup or other sugars, and just as we simply age. But maybe one of the most important things is that there are a number of drugs that cause a big problem with insulin resistance. Things like the hydrochlorothiazide that we're all using for hypertension these days or the loop diuretics like Lasix are a common cause of insulin resistance. Risperidone, which is an antipsychotic, may be one of the most common drugs that's used actually uh, and profitable for big pharma, is a notable cause for, for people who have insulin resistance. People who are taking steroids of any kind very often have that as do people who are taking antiretroviral drugs for people who have HIV or AIDS. Provera and, and estrogen are both known to cause insulin resistance, as are some of the antibiotics like rifampin and isoniazide. One that surprises me a lot is growth hormone, dilantin, and even perhaps more importantly, aspirin and the non anti-inflammatory drugs like Aleve and, and Advil and Motrin, uh, are very common causes of it. So there are a lot of reasons why we get uh, diabetes. And there's probably something we can do to get rid of it that's really important. And that's uh, to increase our lifestyle uh, habits, particularly those that relate to eating right, not having uh, insufficient exercise, the couch potatoes are in big trouble, reducing our levels of stress, and, and sleeping more. All those are key factors that will help us to get rid of diabetes. One of the other things we should know is that we tend to rely on getting rid of diabetes by using drugs that will support insulin sensitivity, which is just the reverse of insulin resistance. Things like the glitazones, which are now getting a lot of disrepute. I mean, one of them was taken off the market because it resulin, because it caused liver failure in, in way too many people and lots of liver transplants. Then a Vandia came out as, as one that now is uh, getting a lot of bad press because it increases the risk and the severity, uh, the lethal severity of heart attacks by more than 50%, causing the very thing we're trying to prevent in diabetes. And then drugs like metformin are coming in, or have been in vogue for a long time, and are probably, if you're going to use a drug, the drug of choice. There are also some supplements that can be used, things like vanadium and chromium and bitter melon and gymnema. All these are drugs and all approaches that can do something for insulin resistance. But the bottom line is, if you live a healthy lifestyle, you're probably not going to get diabetes. And if you want to get rid of diabetes, adopt a healthy lifestyle.